A shell script is an executable program that can have arguments passed to it on the command line. Inside a shell script, it's necessary to be able to access and manipulate the arguments. The arguments act like environment variables because the dollar sign is used to extract their values. The names of each argument is a single digit. The name of the first argument is the digit 1, the second is 2, and so on till 9. You could actually have more than that, but I'll get to that later. Here is a simple script that displays the first two arguments you pass to it. Oh, by the way, the cat command got its name because it can be used to concatenate files. If you name more than one file on the command line, it will list them just as if they'd all come from the same file. You can pipe this output of cat into a single file, thus concatenating several files into one. Anyway, the show2 script uses the echo command to display the first two arguments on the command line. Any other arguments will be ignored. For example, In this case, the $1 variable was May and the $2 was June. $3 was July, but it was ignored by the script. Here is a simple script that's actually useful. This script creates a subdirectory named safety, then copies the file you named into that directory for safekeeping. When you run this command, it's possible that the directory named safety could already exist, which would cause the mkdir command to output an error message, even though the file might be successfully backed up. To prevent this error message from showing up, the standard error output from mkdir is directed to a file. There are two things here that could be new to you. First, the greater than sign is used to redirect standard out, but if a 2 is put in front of it, then it's standard error that becomes redirected. Also, the target of the redirection here is a special device node named null. The null device node will accept input from any source and simply throw it away. This is the famous bit bucket you've always heard about. You can pour data into it all day long and it remains empty. It's always there when you need to throw something away. Anyway, this is how the fsave script can be used to make a safety copy of show2. Now the safety directory should exist and it should hold a copy of the file. I keep a script something like this in a directory where I'm writing a program. Whenever I'm about to make a change that I'm not sure of, I make a quick backup copy of the source code. That way, if I do something really dumb, I can get my safety copy back. Actually, I call my directory crazy. It's for those special moments in my life when I do something that's really crazy. Before we end this lesson, let me show you a new command. The command mkdir, which is sort of an acronym for make directory, was used to create the directory. Another command, rmdir, is sort of an acronym for remove directory, and it can be used to delete the directory. But not this directory. This directory has a file inside it, so it can't be deleted. It would be a simple matter to delete the file using rm and then use rmdir to delete the directory. Another approach is to use rm with the r option. The r option instructs rm to act recursively and remove all subdirectories and all the files they contain. It'll remove an entire directory tree. You can even use the f option along with it to force the files to be removed even if they don't grant write permission to you. Of course, if you don't have the capability of changing a file or directory's permissions, the rm command can't do it either, so those files will stay. Anyway, to delete the safety directory and all the files that are in it, you can do this. Taking this a step further, you can delete every file in a directory along with all of its subdirectories and all of their files with this command. Now if you were to log in as root, giving you access to everything, and change to the root directory and enter this command, Linux would obey you and completely clean every file and directory on every disk drive. So be careful when you're logged in as root.